This is going to be the demonstration drawing for the rough and smooth textured objects. And it's a still life. We're going to walk through the stages of drawing that we've covered so far from gesture, composition on the page, through measuring, drawing a symmetrical object, through light and shadow, and we're going to introduce the idea of texture in this drawing as well. I'm just going to break here for a second just to note I'm using vine charcoal for this gesture, which means that this is going to smear out of the way pretty readily. And I like to gesture with vine charcoal because of that fact. I get my objects right where I want them in vine charcoal, then it'll kind of get out of the way as I go for more specifics. So I'm going to draw this Halloween vase that I've got, but I need to remember how to draw objects that are symmetrical. And with things like this, like vases, building a box and using an axis for symmetry, definitely the best way to go. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this cork back ruler to help me stay straight. So here's the edge of my page. I'm going to take that as true vertical. So I'm going to make sure I line up here. So that I know my vertical is truly going to be vertical. I chose to measure my center line here, so I measured to the center. You could also do that draw an X and that will give you your center as well. Here I'm keeping in mind that this is closer to my eye level, so the ellipse is thinner, and down here it's further away from my eye level, which is somewhere up here. So these ellipses get wider and wider as they go down, so I'm making sure to keep that going. It's important that I follow that regardless of what I see. I might interpret the bottom of this as being flat, but it is not. It's rounded. All right, that'll get me close on this thing. I'm about done with this vine charcoal. I'm just gonna describe this bark, this piece of bark a little more clearly. And before I switch to the charcoal pencil, I'm gonna go through and describe the shadow edge with this vine, though it's probably going to disappear a little bit. I'm at least going to do a once over on that shadow edge with this vine charcoal. So here's cast shadow from that bark all along that vase. Shadow edge of the vase. All right, that feels pretty good. I've got my table dropping off here. I've got my surface here. I included this triangle up here that's gonna become nice and dark, which is gonna be, I actually am gonna fill that in with dark charcoal because it will help provide a background feel to this. You'd be surprised what kind of mileage you can get out of including just a little bit of background stuff. All right, so you can see that with that rag smear, I've lost a lot of the boldness of that vine charcoal, but I still have the ghost of it there. It's kind of just this faded description of where I judged things to be. Now with my charcoal pencil, I can go through and make much clearer lines, much clearer description of this vase much clearer description of the contours here and get started on dealing with the texture eventually. I'm concerning myself a little bit with the texture silhouette of this object as I'm putting the contours in on this bark. I'm also thinking about making the texture edge a little bit, the silhouette edge a little bit textured looking, a little bit ragged, in a way that I'm very much not going to do with this vase. This vase needs to be smooth and specific.
Okay, now I'm gonna go through and be much more specific about the shadow edge in these objects. I'm not gonna draw this one very dark because it's a very soft edge. This little angle change right here is really nice to get because it's the shelf of this vase kind of coming out like that. And so here I have kind of a vertical cast shadow edge. And as soon as the vase starts to make this turn, that edge changes angle and then it changes again. And I'm gonna encourage it to be a little more vertical right here so it doesn't go quite as flat. Then we have this nice sweep downwards. I have a cast shadow here on the back wall. Uh, one thing I notice is that it comes up and just kisses right on the edge of that dark spot. So they're like, dink. And I'm not so sure that I like that. So I think what I'm going to do is encourage that little intersection right there to happen at a different spot. I could encourage it to be lower, maybe, or I could encourage it to be up here uh, further along. And I think that's what I'm going to encourage so we can get this nice light turn to show up better. So this is the cast shadow of that, of this piece of bark and it'll get rougher as I fill it in. This is the, this swoop is the cast shadow from this vase. I need to decide where the angle changes from where the shadow is on the ground to where it goes onto the wall. And I think I've already kind of decided that through here and that feels pretty good to me. So I'm gonna use that as my aiming point. So I'm gonna go from here to there in just a gentle swoop. If it's not perfect exactly what you see up there, it's not a huge deal because it's cast shadow. It can kind of change and fluctuate a little bit. So that's my first aiming spot. It's kind of rounded because the fabric is easing up into the wall. And then where does it go? There's like a little rim of shadow right along here. This is my next aiming point to kind of come along here and shoot to that edge. So I'm gonna try a few ahead of time and then just lay it in. Back to the shadow for the textured thing so it's gonna have some irregularity to it. Here's a good opportunity to describe any fabric wrinkles. The more of this up down you do, the more it's gonna feel like the fabric is wrinkled. Particularly if I copy this, so here are these two wrinkle bumps essentially. Let's say the wrinkles come together and, and join together in kind of an upward wrinkle bump there. That will have the, that'll give us just some surface texture on the table. If you just do flat, straight, bold lines here, you're missing an opportunity to make some irregularity, which is gonna help describe the fabric. All right, so I'm gonna deal with some of the texture in this bark. The smooth texture of the vase, I don't really need to worry about. I just need to fill the light and shadow in here very smoothly, so that's gonna be something I do. But I need to analyze the texture of this piece of bark. What do I see in this bark? Particularly looking at shadows or the surface texture, what is it doing? And there are several things happening in this piece of bark. One is I have these flaky bits that are kind of making these J-shaped, thin cast shadows. There's a big one here on this edge. There's another one that's kind of shaped like a J in here. And there's a few more of those that are kind of wavy and smaller happening elsewhere. That's one thing that's happening, that flaky cast shadow. There's also a little wavy texture. These little ripples, maybe in irregularities in the surface of that bark that look like wavy, almost wrinkles. Yeah, I think that's enough to get me started. The rest, there's like little bits, little pockmarked shadows as well. So there's the wavy bits, there's the flaky bits, and then there's little, little hits here and there of just like divots and holes maybe. So that's enough to go on. I'm gonna start with the big stuff first. So that's the flaky things. Those are gonna help me decide what to do with the smaller, less important textures. So. I'm gonna roll my pencil around a little bit because that will give me, I'll do it up here because this is gonna go dark. That'll give me this irregular line. Like that's really nice. Just twisting the pencil builds in some of this texture. There's that big J shape and it's not exactly in the right spot, but it just kinda goes up to this little horn. So that's something I can put in. There's. A few more happening right here, smaller ones. Again, they have this kind of 
swoopy, like this smile or J, that's kind of a repeated thing that I'm seeing, so. Here's the shadow edge, and I kind of like what the rolling the pencil is doing for my lines, so I'm going to use that technique to describe the shadow edge as well. Okay, this is my start, and I feel like I've got a decent sense of the roughness of this piece of bark versus the relative smoothness of this vase. And so really all I'm going to do at this point is start adding value and shading and so on to this, keeping in mind the principles of the texture that I'm dealing with. So in the bark, I'm gonna feel a lot more comfortable with hard edges, rough marks, twisting the pencil, kind of having a little bit of chaos going on but remembering that light and shadow are still playing on the surface of this bark and I need to pay attention to that. On the vase, I'm gonna be a lot smoother and a lot more careful and make sure my transitions are gradual and gentle so that this feels smooth the way I observe it and this feels rough the way I observe it. And for that, I'm going to use a combination of vine charcoal that's gonna give me smooths and a lot of coverage. Uh, I'm probably going to lay down some vine charcoal then erase back out of it for some textural information particularly highlights. There's a shiny spot here and here. Those are gonna be really nice to get, but I need to add charcoal there in order to erase back to white paper and get them to shine. Vine charcoal is gonna do that for me. One thing to note is that the background is white, but it's not as light as the shiny spot on this vase. So the actual white in my drawing is gonna be shiny spot. And that's just about it. So you saw me smearing with this around. That's distributing my values around quite a bit. It's also knocking back the white of the paper around this so that it's not fighting with what is eventually gonna become my white spot here and there to give that vase some shine and some pop. Also, the vase is not white. It's orange or it's kind of a little darker than white. So I can safely darken this vase quite a bit. Maybe lose this center line a little bit more. That may show up. This is from the vine charcoal and this is the danger of using a ruler as you scribe a line and it can be kind of hard to get rid of it. This will go less important as I build up the values but you may still faintly see it in the end of the drawing. For me personally, stylistically, I, that doesn't bother me. If it's playing a back seat and just showing that I structured the vase but the values are taking precedence, then I'm fine with that. I like to see that it's a drawing, personally. If I was going for smooth finish, hiding my tracks, can't see any of the construction, then I would have been much, much more delicate with those lines as I laid them in. I'm using this rag a lot to smooth everything I'm doing because I know this vase is very smooth. I want my marks and my value buildup to be similarly smooth. So this sketchiness that I have here, like I can see my marks there and in here, I'm gonna aim to get rid of those. And a lot of that's just gonna come down to patience. One thing you can do with vine charcoal is after you lay in some value, so I'll use this little bit of cast shadow as an example. After I lay in this value and I take this line out of the equation and just turn it into a passive value, you can see the paper texture is still pretty prevalent through there. For some people that's not a bother. For other people they want it to be smoother, smoother. If you want that to go smoother, 
you can get a blending stump and blend that in, which can be pretty effective. You can also get some vine charcoal and just go through that area with it and then just use your finger and it will fill in a lot of that paper texture. The nice thing about vine charcoal is that if you overshoot or if you overdo it or you go out of the line or you do something weird, it'll erase back up really readily. Your blending stump, you're kind of grinding the charcoal into the page and so getting it back out can be a struggle. There's reflected light, quite a bit of it here on the side of this vase in the shadow. So I'm gonna make sure that shows up. However, I don't want it to comp compete with the light side because if we remember about reflected light is that it's still darker than anything happening in the light. So this strip of what appears to be light to me is going to still be darker than the stuff that's out here, which means in order to get it to show up as a light thing, I need to darken what's next to it. It may look like I lost my edge here and can't see it, but in my drawing, I can actually still see it relatively clearly. So I'm gonna bring that back now by just darkening the cast shadow. I'm gonna do a thing with the cast shadow here where I decide how close it is to the object casting it. And if it's close to the object casting the shadow, I'm gonna have a sharp edge on that cast shadow. And if it's far away, I'm gonna soften the edge a bit just to kind of give it a little better sense of the light source. So for instance, this curve right here being cast by the edge of this vase is pretty close to what's casting it. So I'm gonna let that stay sharp, but maybe down here it's a little bit farther away. So just slightly less sharp. This cast shadow from the bark is a little bit far away, so I'm gonna let it also soften. And I'm going way overboard here, but I will bring it back with an eraser. Same story down here. So I'm gonna darken and clarify the edge here and let it kind of bleed off a little bit over here. This gets a hard edge because it's very close to what's casting it right there to there. This less so because it's being cast from far away. So this edge, I still have a bit of line there, but this edge is gonna be softer edge. That doesn't mean it can't have character. So right now this is really generic. I'll try and get this waviness back into it. 
So it can still have character, it's just not as crisp and clean an edge. That will become more apparent when we get over here and really clarify that edge. These textural marks I'm making, I'm basing loosely on what I see up there, but I'm also kind of just obeying the principle of what I see up there, which is this J shape. This is getting a bit repetitive for me. One, two, three, four. I kind of don't like that, so I'm gonna break one of these up maybe into a slightly different shape. Following the same principle, that J shape with a little tail at the top. Here on the inside of the shadow, I'm gonna deal with that silhouette edge now, mainly by just rolling my pencil. Yeah, that's giving me a decent sense of that edge. And I feel comfortable going that dark because it's deep in the form shadow, so I know it's gonna be getting plenty of charcoal. All right, that's my harsh textural information there. I'm gonna smear this so that I can erase some of the light stuff out and get even more textural stuff to happen. This piece of bark is not white, so I don't, it doesn't hurt my feelings to do this to it. I can always bring that dark back quite easily. So this has been a medium charcoal pencil up to this point. I think I might start using my carbon pencil to get some of this dark to be nice and dark. Just adding some more of these wavy bits that I have here, just throughout so that they don't seem so clustered in this one little spot. I don't, I, that's where I see them the clearest in the image, but I could imagine an excuse for them elsewhere. I'm editing out a lot of the little textures, and if it's not flaky bit with a crack or these wavy bits, I'm kind of editing it out. I don't mind using rough marks on this bark because it's rough. It doesn't mean I'm just sketching lazily. Rather, I'm not working so hard to make things smooth here. I'm just kind of letting it, my pencil jumps a little weirdly. I'm just embracing that. I still though am aiming for a reasonable fill in of value. I don't want it to look hasty and sketchy. If it looks irregular and rough, that's great. If it looks hasty and sketchy, like scribbling for scribbling sake, that's not gonna do me any good.
Alright, I'm going to come through and describe the light on this bark a little bit more and it, it's like a, it's almost like a cylinder. So it's darker on this edge. It gradates this way in a lot of areas. Some of the, some of these shadow edges are hard. Some of them gradate smoothly. So I'm going to deal with the shadow edge, maybe smoothing it in some places to give some roundness. And then I'm going to favor the, any light information that I might see. The light source is kind of coming from the left here. So I'm going to prioritize that when I'm dealing with the light. If I see little excuses to add another little J shape or something, I'll throw those in as well. I'm not just softening the edge everywhere. I'm kind of growing the texture this way in some places, like slightly more dark marks here. Rather than a smooth transition, it's just more things getting shadow hits right along this edge and that'll kind of break up that shadow edge as well. So sometimes it's softer, sometimes there's just a little more textural shapes in the dark. Both of those things will serve to make it feel like it's kind of going into the shadow. So now I'm just dealing with these little crack shapes that kind of radiate in and out and around and I'm not putting them everywhere, I'm just kind of favoring where there might be little shadow divots. I don't really want to get carried away here, I just want it to feel like the texture. It was feeling a little smooth and drab, so now I'm adding some of this textural stuff. You can see it's breaking this edge and it's giving me a sense, a good sense of the texture. So I'll leave that stuff. This can be a relaxing thing to do if you let yourself, if you trust yourself maybe to follow the principles of the texture and not slave over exactly what you're seeing on the image. If you try to draw exactly what you see on the image, it's really frustrating because you lose track of where you're at. Oh my goodness, this is darker and that's lighter. If you just follow texture principles instead, so organic textures can be some of the most relaxing things to draw. Forgiving in a way, maybe in a way like drawing a face or something with more smooth stuff is not very forgiving because it, at no point am I like, oh my goodness, I put this crack in a slightly wrong spot. Whereas if you put an eyeball in the wrong spot, heaven help you. I'm kind of staying away from this edge with too much of this textural stuff because I want it to be like light into halftone, texture on the shadow edge into the shadow, and then I have a textural silhouette as well that's gonna give me a good sense of roughness. If I feel like this texture is too scribbly, I can come through in some spots and just ease it up a little bit but I wouldn't go overboard. It can be really easy to just over rub things and they just always are going back to smudgy, I call it. They're always going back to indistinct shapes. You kind of want there to be some of that, particularly in a heavy texture like this. All right, I'm gonna go through and pretend. This is something where having that light handout is really helpful or knowing the parts of light and shadow are really helpful or just having some three-dimensional awareness of where the light is coming and I'm just gonna pretend that I'm light right now. So if I'm coming this way and striking the object, what am I gonna be hitting? Maybe there's a ridge here. Maybe this shelf's off and doesn't catch quite as much light, but it comes back up here. There's a little divot right here that if I pop some light there, it's gonna feel like a shelf coming out. So that's kind of nice. Underneath this cast shadow, I'm gonna use that crack, I'm gonna use the crack as an excuse to throw just a little bit of light right there. That'll help differentiate this from that. Here's a deep cast shadow, so I can almost imagine there being a shelf here as well. I just want it to start feeling like it's taking on dimension. Once it starts doing that, I'm, I'm happy and I'm moving on. Kind of hunting for places that look like they are too middle of the road or something. This is the stage where there's a reasonable amount of payoff. You can come through and just, it's almost like playing with your eraser. You've done all the work of describing all this texture. Now you're kind of using your eraser to just, you know, put the finishing touches on. And I say finishing touches, but I could spend a significant amount of time dealing with this texture, adding more, smoothing the values here. I'm gonna stop occasionally and look and see, because you can get tunnel vision here where it's like you're focusing on this and this and this and this and this and this and not looking at the overall. So it's good to step back occasionally and just take a look at the overall. This little halo is bugging me. I'm gonna use some vine charcoal and just get rid of it. That feels 
that's better. Okay, I'm going to call this there. If I were to carry this drawing forward, one of the things that I would be focusing on is making sure my symmetry is working here and maybe developing the darks here in this core shadow of this vase. I still think that's uh, reasonably light. So, but this gives us a good overview of dealing with a heavily textured object versus a smooth object and maybe the differences that you're going to run into when you're dealing with either one of those. The smooth object seems simpler but in a lot of ways it's harder, I find, than the textured object. There's more freedom here than there is here.